versus McBenedict, Ryu versus Ness. Because mm -hmm. again, this is going to be another case of how well can McBenedict anti-air uh, and how well can he play around Ness's big aerial hitboxes. And how does he deal with that grab game and all of the multi-hits that Ness possesses? Yeah. And normally, I mean, we talked about it before, but McBenedict has a pretty good anti-air game. He has a good understanding of how to interact with aerial opponents, and that's partially because he does actually play Ryu in Street Fighter. So he really understands what the purposes of his moves are, why they were designed in the first place. And you can see he's putting it to good use right now. Yeah, Austin getting a little baby heal there, but worth putting the idea in his mind. Really thought that he was going to drift in with an up air or a neutral air. That full focus would have absolutely gotten him the stock right there. Low risk, high reward, because uh, if Ness doesn't commit there, he actually has to trip off stage and then recover. Mm -hmm. And Austin, being the discerning man that he is, did not want to challenge fate on Lilat and just said, all right, fine. There we go. Just pressuring with the up tilts. Austin has built back some of this percent, but he is definitely sitting much closer to a kill percent than, uh, than McBenedict is right now. And Austin's just a very crafty player in general. He's really hard to nail down, and that's kind of why he's made this comeback. However... Break. No Lilac shenanigans here, so he is going to get that forward smash and take the first stock. But Austin, not far behind, does get double hits of that uh, PK Thunder to break the focus. Up air really nicely spaced. Even on the perfect shield, isn't going to get the down smash. Mm -hmm. Which is one of Ryu's longest range punish options. And now, yeah, tries to go for that up smash, but Austin's able to come in, get him off stage, and that is exactly where Austin excels. When opponents are coming back on stage, it is not for free, and he showed why right there, covered a variety of angles that McBenedict could have come in at. Now, Austin's getting a second stock started off strong, as he's made up all that percent that McBenedict had the extra credit for. And now, as long as he gets off this platform, we're back to even neutral ground where Austin excels. Okay, McBenedict pushed into the corner, and that's actually been one of the big reasons that Austin's been winning this game. Ooh, the forced situation. That PK Thunder often sends you in uh, angles that you don't expect. Sent him straight into the stage, wasn't ready for the tech, and ends up losing that stock in that game as a result. Mm -hmm. Had to deal with the PK fire. And then, you know, coming back up, PK Thunder just to cover the trails and make it even harder to determine how am I going to get back on stage. And again, that seems to be sort of the question for McBenedict, is how am I going to get back on stage against this Ness? All right. Going to be going to Final Destination. Uh, really solid reuse stage. Simplifies a lot of the platform play. Just forces the opponent to deal with the wall that is Ryu with his really big back air and really strong tilts. Always consistently, Mr. Big Benedict is focusing into the last of that border, so he's still able to eat through. Mm -hmm. Nice landing punish, but lands with a weak hit of forward air and doesn't find a follow-up. It was a good weave for McBenedict there to get through the PK Thunder, making it look like Austin might be able to connect the two, but then just came right back around. And Austin's still going for these fake outs, or maybe just, you know, an option selector to say, all right, I'm not hitting him with this, so I'll just go back to neutral. Okay, there we go, connecting full hits of that forward air, beats through focus, and double up air. The first one landed too high for a focus attack to connect. So after he let it rip, that's a free punish. Falling down. And now McBenedict's got the challenge of getting back on stage. Austin was a little bit further away because he committed oh, to that so PK Thunder. Damage. Yeah, shield damage is uh, a big time. But wow, trading stocks because he traded that up air with the downer. That was such quick thinking from McBenedict to throw out the hitbox that would just even up the game. And so strongly in McBenedict's favor was that trade. Now working on some percent to build up to 50 right now. On and maybe two interactions? Yeah, and that's all because he's been able to juggle Austin. This is why he picked FDs, because now Ness doesn't have the platforms to rely on to mix up his landing options. But Wild this... For you. Forced to Tatsu, but Ness, not a fast character, can really take as much advantage of that as maybe some others. It's really good patience there off stage by McBenedict, too, to wait for the PK Thunder to run out. He knows that Ryu's got recovery for days so long as you're going vertical. Wow. Sitting at absolutely sure you kill percents, but he's got to be careful here. Chilling at the ledge, that down smash is going to push him off. He has to Tatsu, that's it! What? Austin choosing the most unorthodox of options to finish the stock right. stylishly. 
He, he could have picked any other aerial and he would have killed still the same way. Uh, Nick Benedict would not have been able to make it back. But in that situation, chose to finish it decisively with the down air. Dude, that, I want you to envision that exact situation one month from now where we get the slow-mo on it. Mm. Ugh. The zoom in on his little twinkle toes as he sends you down. <laughs> it really is not a like a visually impressive move. No. It's all the psychic power he's channeling through the tiptoes. <laughs> These are my special shoes that I use to use my special moves. Yeah. It's my brand. I see it with my special eyes. My brand. What is it? Asics. Yeah. Oh, they look like Adidas. Oh, that says in Russia. It's a very popular brand in Russia, Adidas. Is. Wow. Using the focus to block the PK Thunder from connecting, and that gives him level 2 focus. There you go. Sitting maybe a neutral interaction away. One solid conversion from the to the, to the uh, in Shoryu presents. So obviously McBenedict picked this stage to increase the juggle on Austin. And clearly Austin's been doing a good job of catching the landings, uh, not as much as it is juggling. But do you think McBenedict needs to, you know, refine that juggle game a little bit on FD? I mean, some of it is, oh my god, some of it is just being able to catch this floaty character. He's found some opportunities and then he's just drifted right out of it. And that's, that's the difficulty of playing against Ness is he is easy to catch the landing of in theory because he doesn't have really strong hitboxes coming down but he has that air dodge that has incredible drift it's, wow it can be hard sometimes yeah just has to adjust to the mix-ups and good. that you know that's what we've been seeing so i mean austin's doing such a good job of abusing this character that he's been playing that's a punish. since forever that's such a big punish, putting him almost in Shoryu kill percents, maybe even in Shoryu kill percents with as light as Ness is. No, he is in kill percents for sure with this rage. <gasps> that Nair, I wonder if it was a C-stick Nair. I wonder if he was going for down air. He may have been. But now he's got to find a different way to close out oh, the stock so he can move on now. to game four. Really fishing for that shield break. Catches the jump with the weak hit Shoryu. Tries to challenge with hard up tilt, but he was facing the wrong way. Still got him with the landing up air, and Austin taking a quick 3-0. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Really excellently played all around, and it really came down to the fact that for as hard as McBenedict was punishing Austin, and he was punishing him really hard, he just Austin, didn't get the finishers. Well, he didn't get the finishers, but also Austin was hitting back just as hard.